so it's the PRs from Anatoly um, on Thursday with triage fixing right to left uh, display on the default theme on the theme machine and something he pushed on dev but we also cherry picked it on 110x uh, because as you can see uh, this override of the RTL class was not applied on the other ones so that was an issue um, that's it for Orchard 1, Orchard 2 not that much I assume unless and well yesterday there was a lot of activity because because some people filed issues because they tried it so we just fixed them uh, seven days ago Jean Thierry working on on the branch watching still working on the branch watching uh, adding require features attributes we talked about it last week I explained the the, the features so require feature attribute and Nick merged it uh then yesterday i up yes yesterday i updated castle.core um version this one 400 let me show you it was funny i know it was also causing some issues to uh the asp.net uh, projects let me show you um The previous version, which was the 4.0.0, was pointing to system type components. Type component. This one was pointing to that. But this library with this version doesn't exist. It's 4.1.0. It was a typo. Uh, 4.3.0. So every time you will restore castle.core, castle there will be a warning saying I couldn't find the reference project so I used 4.1.0 because it's looking like the one you want 4.0.1 so they fixed it so that's why I pulled it because there was a warning on the build um, then we made a bunch of branches and PRs for uh, bug fixes um, this one print setup if the password is invalid uh, apparently Antoine says it doesn't work so I will have to try again because it worked on my, on my site that's weird and I see the, the things are correctly generated so the idea is that if the password is not valid you could still start a setup but it will fail in the middle when the user is created and the user is not valid and then you have a corrupted database so now we are checking that the form is at least valid before allowing to um, submit but apparently it's not sufficient we'll see why uh, so it's not merged yet fix log file name uh, same thing I think it was Carl who mentioned that uh, the logs are using back uh, backslash so they were creating on Mac or Linux it will create a file name app data logs or log instead of a folder logs so that has been merged. Um, this one, this is Jerry still working on watch. Um, fixing the shape factory events, it's because. Why is it the one from you, Tim? You should open the chat. Hello, George. So this is because. And that would be a good way to show it. Uh, so let me check. So this is Gitter, and as you can see, sometimes people join and chat a lot. So it's very nice to be not blocked. Um, so team, team, who created this issue? I will find it. Yes, this was Steve apparently. Okay. Um, so the issue was that you could not use Shape Factory with um, a custom type specified dynamically 
and also custom properties on the shape factory. Let me show you because I made a test for that. The issue is that you could not do something like um, create an event create to define a subtype of a shape for a specific shape, shape type. So the class for a shape type, okay? Um, to have custom behavior on your shape. And then also be able to call this shape type which will use this class type and also assign property. So this was not working in Orchard 2, it was working in Orchard 1. So yeah, um, this is to fix it. And that's it for Orchard 2. Not much progress, no progress on media because I was working on a side task, I will show you. Um, and that's it, questions? And I assume Carl will give us more bugs today because he's trying it. Um, oh, new website, Lika. Oh, I saw that. I saw that yesterday, interesting. It's our largest traffic and capacity site ever on Orchard. It's and twice, I will tell you, twice the revenue of any other site we have. And that's why I saw it, because I went on W3Tech yesterday just to see and it's not the fastest orchard, the, the, the largest orchard itself, but still, um, it appeared here. That's why I went on the site. Oh, wow, that's so cool. So it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seventh biggest website on orchard. Can you send me the link to this page so I can send it yep. to the team? Sure, I have yeah. um, used it many times, actually, even on this meeting. Yeah, no, it's, um, and this is, we're running on interim hardware right now. We don't have the full build out. It's a we're running in a third-party data center, so it's um. That's cool. We're hoping that uh, we're hoping it's gonna make a lot of money for us. <laughs> but it's by far the most. I mean, we we could not have done this on any other platform because of the deep level of integration required, and the um, you know, we had to build a whole new checkout path for it. So it's um it's been almost a year since good. I went to India. So it's been a very we're very happy. We're very cool. proud of the site. Big one. Nick is teasing everyone when I migrating to O2. Well, nobody can because it's not ready. No, well, we we may be able to consider um, that. Okay, so nice website, George. Um, this, so as a reminder, please come on the Gitter uh, chat. Lots of people to talk with and it's faster and easier to solve issues and to get feedback and to everything. Okay, I can close the window. Uh, that is so. What else? Uh, status. Demos. Myself, anyone else has demos? We got George. So, Lika mo mobile dot US? Yeah. And uh, we'll be probably moving the site to Orchard whenever the, the localization stuff comes out from uh, Lombic because they need to launch the site in Spanish. I'm back. So. Apparently, I was I left without knowing it. Do you still see my screen? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Because yeah. okay. uh, I, I was kicked out of the of the call. That's weird. I had to join back. Um, uh, Likamobile.us. Oh, Lombic did the site. Okay, interesting. Um, then, um, yes, I was seeing uh, Demos George as the site. Any other one? Um, Okay, okay, so a uh, feature, let me show you what I did. I did something, I did something, I did something. So um, last week discussion was about uh, media management. So I showed the progress with the media picker and the integration in the body parts and other parts, which was um, generating a tag. So it was generating something like image, uh, kittens.jpg. There is a game. Oh my God. Thank you, Antoine. Um, 
so image kittens.jpg uh, and this this is interpreted so the body is then interpreted with tokens and this is a handlebar token to replace that with the actual url of the of the media uh, the, the discussion was about using the f relative file name instead of using the content item id because at first before last week it was something like an id okay the issue with that is um, that every time we process the page, we have to load the content item by ID and then get its URL. So as many images we'll have on the page, we will have uh, SQL queries. Even though they are fast, they are still SQL queries. So if we can prevent SQL queries, that's better to render a page. Uh, they can be cached also because it's a content item ID, but uh, still. Um, so, the, so we went on looking at the solution where we are using a, a, relative, a relative file name. So we can actually get the location, whatever the store is, like Azure Blob Storage, local file system, whatever you want. Um, and then get the, the public URL so that the client can directly uh, request that and there is no um, request. Then the perf issue, the next perf issue to, to solve is to optimize not really an issue is that we are evaluating tags here and there are two solutions either we cache the full body and its tags to evaluate the template to render or we don't cache the body as a template and we just interpret it again and again or compile it again and again on every request um, if we cache it using handlebars or other uh, templating solutions they will usually compile like literally do a new class or a new assembly which will be dynamically compiled and uh, rendered so it's fast once it's compiled but the compilation takes time and um, it takes memory so if you have thousands of content items you will get thousands of dynamic templates dynamically compiled templates and that can be an issue um, in terms of memory usage and also for each version that you will create, each version you will save, it will generate a new assembly or a new class. And it will take more and more and more memory. So it could be seen as a memory leak. So that's kind of an issue. Um, so for this scenario then, uh, where tags are in bodies, I think uh, we should not have to compile or cache with compilation so that there is no memory leak. And we should be able to run it uh, live, interpret it, and it should be fast. Um, so that, that's the, 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 that was the conclusion of the discussion last week. Um, the second thing was that this is handlebars syntax. And we also have a dot liquid, uh, oh, sorry, a liquid based uh, syntax for the, for the templates, OK? Um, so we need to i think we need to um, to make it simpler by just using one and uh, this should be the liquid syntax because it's more powerful yet as simple as handlebars not as simple as handlebars but kind of as simple as handlebars um, we, you can't do that, I think, with that liquid as simple, but you can do something like uh, it will look like, or we can improve it, but it will look like um, JPEG uh, pipe image. That is, it could be, or image tag. And that, that will make sense, okay? So the file and image tag. You are sharing your screen, yes. Um, so that will look like this and the nice thing is that you can do it's simpler to do more complex things like uh, append jpeg and then image tag okay see something like this or if we want to crop we could say image tag and then we could pass some parameters like uh, crop uh, 320 by something like this okay it's 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 more powerful to to do things like this um, so liquid is, is a nice solution 
But then I looked at the, the so I was using the dot liquid uh, library. So I have talked about it many times. Uh, this is the dot liquid. Here dot liquid 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 dot liquid. Yep, this one. Okay, this is the uh, .NET implementation. There is another one, but this one works with .NET Core. This is also the one that uh, Lombic is using for their liquid module on Orchard 1 because they made uh, the same thing to make templates using the liquid language. Um, and um, so I looked into into it and I tried to, to make it faster because the issue with um, that I had with, the, with this um, library is that if we look at the source code, um, like if I load template, this one. Um, not this one. Or is it? This one, for instance, not, not this one, for instance. Uh, this one, variable, literal. Yeah, so if you look at it, so this is variable, but there are many files with regular expressions. Everything in dot liquid is based on regular expressions. And I assume this is because they ported it from Ruby where it was also using all the regular expressions. And it's nice to it's nicer to read, like to read one line containing that. I think it's easier than trying to understand from a method that will parse manually what it's doing. So for instance, this code written by hand will be not complex to write, but complex to read, to to read, to understand when you read the code. Um, so I, I can I understand why why they, why they did that for two reasons. Um, the issue is that it's in terms of performance, it's really not uh, adapted. Um, so yes, they are compiled. Regex com compiled regex are, are faster than not compiled regex, but um, they are slower than custom code and way much slower than custom code. It's the difference is, is huge actually. And it takes also some memory. So that I had an issue with that. Um, and also with the way you you have to configure the objects and the issues we have had with uh, Gentilly to, to make some objects work. So it's not very, very simple sometimes, but yeah, that that's not really a, a good excuse. So, um, so I'm kind of dumb, and uh, when I saw it was during Redex, and I could get very much, uh, very well um, results. Let me show you, for instance. Um, I have the, if I go on Gitter, Gitter. So they have a Gitter forum also, which is nice because you can also communicate with the devs and ask questions to the community if it works. Now it works. And so I, I mentioned that um, last week to the team saying, so I worked one hour on the project trying to make it faster and to remove some regular expressions. And um, this is passing a template and rendering a template. This is with their solution. So 86 microseconds to microseconds to parse a template. This was a simple, a simple template. And uh, 333 microseconds to render the template. And just by removing some, a few regular expressions, like five of them to pass integers, to pass uh, booleans, to pass very simple things, uh, strings. So very simple things. I got from 333 to 264, just with one hour of work. And so this is interesting because there are, there are five times more regular expressions than the ones I, I'm, I remove so the, the the perf gain could be could be con, con, uh, considerable here. Um, so I ask if they would consider removing the regular expressions, but but I'm concerned by maintenance maintenance in the manual code. Yes, and I agree because there is some maintenance and also it's harder to understand. And because it's from Ruby, it's easier to to take the same exp regular expressions as, as the Ruby code. Um, so it's uh, it's kind of hard to to, to work on that in, in this condition. So I decided to make one, um, which should be faster, and it is faster. Uh, so I make a new project uh, with the intent to use it in uh, Orchard, and that has the same liquid template uh, um, format, but 
with some little differences that will make things uh, even better. Um, so I made a project. Let me show you. I made fluid. Fluid is quite not liquid, but almost the same, right? Um, so this is just another liquid template engine. Uh, but that will be much faster. And the difference, uh, so I made a benchmark um, project too, just to be able to compare uh, fluid to liquid. Uh, some, I, I don't, I won't run it now, but um, uh, so if I open Notepad, so if I, so what I did, oh, let me show you the test. The f I tested many things. I tested to pass a template like this, which is typical from small template. Okay, um, pass and, and evaluate also, they are two different things. I also pass and evaluate a big text like this. So it's like uh, lorem ipsum, okay, not that big, you see here, you see that. It's 10 lines here and yeah, it's not, a blog post is usually much bigger than that, right? Um, and there is no tag inside. This is just to show in, in, in case we have a body, like a blog post without any tag, no images, nothing. What What's the cost of rendering a body that has nothing and should just render itself? And then I used a lorem ipsum, which a simpler one, like a small one, but with one tag image. Okay, and the benchmark is about um, passing with liquid, passing with fluid, uh, passing the big lorem ipsum and same thing for the for the for the fluid, rendering the simple output. So rendering rendering something easy like this in both scenario. So I, I tested a bunch of them, and uh, something I noticed is that if I take the big lorem ipsum, well, and I say big, I mean it's not even big for a blog post or anything. Um, it was taking something like nine nine eighty microseconds, so almost one millisecond. Okay. And on that liquid, and it's taking one, let's say two, I'm generous microsecond uh, on a fluid. This is the, the this should be the fastest thing because there is no tag, so it should just flush the the content, and it's not doing that because using the regular expression, it has to find all the tags, all possible tags, and because the content is bigger than usual, it takes longer, and this is not even a, a big content, it's relatively small content or medium content. Um, so um, so I'm concerned by, by this thing. And then whatever test I will run with the parsing and rendering of the template, it will be twice as fast with uh, with my, my solution. Uh, so that's it. Uh, that's what I did. A fluid um, engine that will allow us to use it everywhere, even for uh, small tokens instead of handlebars, bars, um, and still be fast without having to compiling anything. Because, because so um, one of the advantages um, of that is first, uh, it's uh, interpreted. There is no compilation. So we don't invoke any expression dot uh, compile, okay? To evaluate, like for instance, if you do a two plus three, uh, all these engines they will do an expression dot add and compile the expression to get two plus three. The solution implemented is interpreted, which means it will look oh it's a plus, so let's do an addition between this thing and this thing. Okay, it will be slower to render if it was compiled first, but because we don't want to to cache it or to have a more leaks, we just want to evaluate it every time, and it's still faster in the end than. Um, than doing that, than doing the compilation phase, okay? Um, so it's interpreted, so there is no memory leak. Everything is flushed in memory uh, every time you, you, you render a, um, a page. And, and it's good because if we want to be very fast, we will cache it at the last level, like on the response or on an edge cache server like Nginx or whatever. So that, that this is what will provide the, the, the fastest way. And this is, the interpreted way is still super fast. I, I have some numbers on Orchard and it's still very, uh, very fast. Um, so it's interpreted, uh, it's uh, async, which all the templates engines are not. It's async because we want to be able to run some database calls from, um, uh, from the templates. Yes, a template might 
have my well ideally should already have all the values available for the template but uh, in practice we uh, call some data access or long running task io task from the templates like the example we used uh, last week or two weeks ago with uh, liquid was to have the queries uh, object available and run the query from the template and then uh, get the result from that okay so that that's something that's something important to have async when we have multiple requests uh, on the web server uh, so it's async um, and some little it's it's more uh, yeah i won't say it's donut oriented because there are some rubyism that are not there uh, i changed the grammar a little bit um, so for instance if you have um, some thing which is passed to a filter like a filter name say image okay or resize um, with liquid you can pass parameters to a filter like this so you say for instance one and then you can pass other parameters like um, uh, one two three or name the other parameters like a uh, foo colon two bar colon three okay but you can't name this one this one is like the default input that's kind of sad so i change the grammar so you can do resize still the same thing or you can if you want uh, do resize um, uh, quality so you don't need a default value as a parameter you can do resize quality uh, format something like this okay. um, so it's just removing the the mandatory default parameter and uh, by making available uh, parameters by position or by name like zero one or quality format as you want uh, that's your and the filters are async so if you want to do like uh, uh, archives pipe query to query to to query the to start the query the archives query then we could even say then uh, size 10 uh, offset I don't know 20 we can do that and this will be async query can be a async filter so this is something that, the, that you can do now that you can't do with the default one I missed some questions I didn't miss any question do you have some questions comments um, no, it was Nick. Um, something else? Uh, uh, ah, what I wanted to say? Yes. And today I learned something by going on the the forum for this thing. I uh, someone mentioned that and maybe you know it. Dynamics, the Microsoft product, has a portal solution where you can build um, a website for your product, and it will be able you will be able to gather data from the Dynamics uh, CRM. And um, and what is interesting is that there is a new version this year that lets you write templates in Liquid. Dynamics 365 portal liquid. So you're going to try and top them into using Fluid? Well, I pro probably if mine and they are using dot liquid. So, and I assume they will have the same issue in terms of birth and everything. So maybe why not? But I'm I'm not mentioning that for for this reason. I'm just mentioning that um, it's interesting. So it's kind of validation that um, they also need. A template language which is not Razor because Razor is not safe and we need a safe um, template engine so we can again the safety here is to whitelist what a user can access with a template they can't do a format c colon which they can with a Razor they can't access a database which they can with Razor they can't access data that we don't opt in for instance by navigating the properties up to a connection string or user password on everything um, so liquid is very nice for that because it's secure you can't break anything it's like a small sandbox you can't run something which is not allowed by the template engine explicitly or by your configuration explicitly so that's why we, we need a, a template language uh, for that uh, and it's also loosely typed uh, dynamically typed like JavaScript and unlike Razor and C sharp 
So you can do, you can call a filter with any variable type. You don't have to care about the variable type. In C sharp, you will have to care to check the types to convert everything. Here it will be like JavaScript converted dynamically. Um, so that's kind of a, of a validation for, for the choice of uh, liquid and a template engine. Um, yeah. So that's cool. And you see here, they, they are using exactly what we do. A fetch XML is like executing a query. They have another one like this. Uh, where is that? Um, yeah, they have a query something tag. So they use a custom tag name here. This is a tag name. This is a tag. So they're using a tag name to do that. They're not using a filter. This is a possibility. I don't know. We have to look at the, the format, what it looks like. But you see, like request that something uh, we we have it also quarantine or something called request and yeah it's interesting mm. so the guy just well he, he's just concerned about backwards compatibility or something like that oh what did the i miss liquid, something the liquid guys that's why you didn't submit well submit it back. well the, this guy didn't write liquid in the first place it was someone named tim jones who wrote it uh, in 2010, so it was a long time ago. And this guy is just now one of the maintainer of the project, or maybe the current lead maintainer. Okay. So he didn't rate everything. So when you try to change something, I mean, you can break. And and the regular expressions, yes, they, they are easy to maintain and to, to read and to understand when you are new in the code. If you, if you start writing manual parser code, then you will add some issues for sure. Uh, and also the way the parser is done, there is no AST, so it's just like find and replace. Okay. okay. So so it's very good for regex, and also regex allow that, but the manual parser will not allow that. And this is what I did. I, I have a, I have a parser which will generate an AST. Oh, also what what it allows us to do. Very 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 important. So the the in fluid we have a first a parsing generation uh, parsing phase which is ready passing to generate an AST representing the template. So you have an AST. And from the AST, then you can change the AST. You can manipulate the AST, optimize it, change it, like visit it, do whatever you want on that, cache it if you want. It's passed, then it's an AST. And then you can evaluate the AST to render the template. Or you can also evaluate the AST to compile the template. You, we could still, if we wanted, compile the AST into C sharp like Razor is doing and then having an assembly that will run natively and not uh, visit the AST. Uh, so this will be even faster if you want. But the nice thing with that is we can from that past um, AST generate um, an ASP.NET view, actual views. So we can make a view engine from that. So we can allow also um, dot liquid files in a theme or as shape templates or anything natively from MVC. We just have to provide a, sh um, a view engine from that to uh, to MVC. And this is totally doable. And I think we should have that because this, this will also allow us to create themes using uh, liquid syntax and a tracer. That could enable some designer uh, to make themes much uh, easily than, than Razor. Okay. So I, I will talk to Jean Thierry because I'm sure he will be interested in doing that. Um, because he started already to do that, to have shape harvesters using handlebars, and he did it. Um, and, um, and he did it. And I think if we make it as a view engine, then we can have it even without shape harvesters because we already have shape harvesters based on the view engines. They will just find the views and ask MVC to render them. And we can compile them like Razor is doing because if they are files, then they can be compiled and pre-compiled and be run as C sharp code, like as fast as a compiled view from Razor because it will just be C sharp code that will be executed again and again. There won't be any parsing. It will just be write through, write bar, evaluate the image filter, and then write the result. This will be super fast. And and because we have the AST, and the AST is super simple. There are like five different statements. Uh, if, a for, a switch case, uh, set variables, and that's it. That's the logic to write down on C sharp. The rest is just calling a method on, which is already there. That's the only thing we need to, to generate. So that should be super simple. Um, 
So I think that's something we, we should consider, consider also. It gives an upgrade path from can't hear you, I think. No. Maybe that's because I haven't started talking. Oh, we heard some weird noise and I thought it was you. Okay. No. Um, yeah. Um, having the same template language in, in themes and uh, in other places. Oh, I see. If, yeah, you could, you could have, for example, something that allows you to change templates uh, from the admin. And this is how you, you start building your theme, maybe. Yeah. And then you Yes. You move it to uh, to files and, and you yes. just have a smooth upgrade so, pass. Yeah. So, yes, yeah, uh, let me continue that. So, we have the liquid, or any, well, we chose liquid, but we could use anything. We have that because it's safe. So, we can edit that in the admin. We are sure that people won't, won't go over their uh, permissions to do anything that they are not allowed because we are. it's a safe template engine. So we can have an editor and let them type templates. And then we can extend that to have a module or a theme that allows you to write specifically views or file views for shapes and for views inside the admin. We could even have the editor write the files on disk if we want it because it's safe, because it's just um, liquid. We are sure they can't, they can't break anything. So we could write the full theme from Liquid, even from the admin with that, because, because we are sure that we can run what is and give access to the uh, file system for that. Uh, download the theme button. And yeah, we could package it. And it, because even we could even say it doesn't need compilation, so we don't need to restart anything or to compile dynamically. And maybe Razor will support that actually, because we can change a file and it will be recompiled on the file change. So we can even support a compilation of files, even if we change them dynamically, that will work. So download the theme button. Yes, we could do that. Yeah, it will be safe. As long as we ensure that the theme is a set, well, we can validate the type of files that are copied on a theme. That's easy to do. Uh, yeah, we have to think about it. But yeah, that that's, that opens the theme um, uh, edition on the admin. That's good. Um, um, let me see if I am I on the. Let me do something quickly because I'm not sure it's to everyone. Um, so let me show you. I show me it should work. That net, that net. What? I don't have the bin. I, I lost it. Okay, I lost it, so I can't show you. Chat CMS at web. I can't show you. I have a website ready with the liquid template running. Uh, that's okay. Just to remember what we can do with that on our chat already. Okay, that's it. Um, questions, comments? I have a general comment, Sebastian. Okay. Uh, with all this uh, focus and work on Orchard 2, mm -hmm. is Orchard 1 uh, largely going to, okay, this is, you need to start planning your path to Orchard 2, or is there going to be further development with Orchard 1? Um, I would say it depends on whether there's new feature on Orchard 1. Uh, we have the dev branch ready to be merged with new features, but we personally, I don't have any features planned for Orchard 1, new features. So right now it's maintenance on the 110x branch and 
some people adding features on the 111 branch. There are some big users still for Ultra One, so definitely not done because this is currently the only version working. But uh, my my personal main focus is on Ultra Two. Okay, because but, but we, it's not the case for everyone. Yeah, because we uh, I don't I don't see going anywhere going to Ultra Two until probably next year uh, till the. You know, we're, version two is stable, and we still have a huge amount of development we're doing with our current clients. So, yeah, Orchard One is still there, still stable, and it's not missing that many new features. So there are improvements going on, but like for instance, all the features we do in Orchard Two, they're already in Orchard One. Even the even the liquid templates, it's there in Orchard One already. Uh, Lombic did that, so so I'm not I'm not a, I'm not concerned or afraid of anything for, for Orchard One because we have most of the features that we could need. I don't see anything we could uh, invest a lot into, um, and still people are using that and sending some pull requests and bug fixes like. Look at the laser guys. They are working a lot on the tax, on the um, taxonomy, on the localization, on the performance. Uh, see, one stop is, is also still using it and just shipped a big project. You have Lombic also working on new features. They, they released the meta picker field uh, last week or two weeks ago. So, yeah, that, that's okay. Yeah, so yes, yes, you see in these uh, meetings more of Orchard 2 because, because I talk a lot and I work mostly on Orchard 2. And there is just new features, so it's easier to, to show new features. Um, but people are still using Orchard One. Okay. So we are not shutting down Orchard One. As long as users use it. And and it's good to have the time to because Orchard Two is yet is far from being ready. Uh, so you still have time to look at it and to prepare migra mig the migration or new project on that and if you want. You don't have to. It's a new platform. There are lots, lots of the things are exactly the same. The concepts, the the, the language, and the goals. But yeah. That. Um. So that's for the demos. Uh, topics roadmap. So Nick suggested to um, update the roadmap because it's wrong because because I failed to deliver um, wiki roadmap. So yeah, the issue is that behind these things, like what I'm doing is was triggered by the media and things like this so still the media is blocking projection um this is also related to um, to liquid but we have it already just refactoring M module packaging is this unique who changed that or is it me who wrote it i can't remember I don't know, but I don't think we need it to be honest. We've got we've got nougat. Um, is there something in particular around module packaging we need to do? I don't think there is. Everything's nougat packages. Sure. Did oh, I write oh, that? You can, no, you can see who did this. Actually, there's a feature where you have got the word blame. If you scroll up to the top, you can yeah. see who wrote this. If it's not true, it must be me then. Well, I don't know. Have a look at the blame <laughs> thing. Um. Is there a blame no, for the wiki? No, there's a much better feature than that. For the wiki, there's a blame? Yeah, I think so. Have you seen that? For the wiki. Uh, let's have a look. That's okay. Well, that, that sounded weird. Oh, but now it's broken. Now it's back. Okay. Um, oh, maybe there's not a blame. Huh. Yeah, module packaging. Because you see, you no, know, it's different. I see uh, modules. Well, 
I don't think we need module packaging. We but what do you mean? Packages. What do you what do you mean by we don't need module packaging? I'm just talking about the terms here that I know what feature we have and we have it. It's not that we don't need anything. We have module support. Okay, it's like yeah. it's, a, it's a term is. Sorry, weird. that's what I mean. I don't think that we. I don't think that item needs it's, to be in there as we already have it. We already had it, so it's not because it's for this type this sprint like beta. We had it. Before or during this sprint, I think we had it during this sprint. So that's did we what to create nuclear packages? Maybe the modularity. Maybe. Well, uh, we've worked on that module support, dynamic compression loading. Oh, no more. Okay, module support. Done. Module support is, is done. Um, flow projections, I put it there. Taxonomy won't be there. Um, won't be there. No, no, the media processing, right? Media pro I don't know, I want it. I mean, it will be there. Uh, last week we talked about it and we'll use um, um, image sharp. Uh, middleware that they did image shop lets you manipulate images okay and and they made a middleware to do image processing so we'll just include their, their stuff it will work it should it should be super easy to do we just have to do a liquid filter to call into the url generation for their middleware like i showed today like image crop risk styles yeah. and options and then it will generate a url that the media processing will intercept and render. Okay, sounds cool. And it will be simpler, a non-short one, and yeah, better. Um, media library, yeah. So the status on that is um, oh, um, um, media library. We did the select yesterday, uh, last week. Um, so it's almost done. What were the issues? Performance for rendering, so we don't have to load the content items. Uh, Bertrand had an ID, so I will probably implement uh, that. I won't mark it. Uh, so the ID from Bertrand. Um, Bertrand, do you remember your ID exactly? <laughs> because sure. I, don't, I, don't, I remember some of bits course, of that. So it, it, it started from that conversation about media uh, where um, I, I don't remember who mentioned that, might be me actually, that uh, the, the main usage of media, in most usage of media actually, uh, the media are local to the content item you're, you're editing. Uh, global media are actually the exception, but in Orchard 1, we are treating global media as the general case, uh, and we don't have anything specific for local media. So my idea was to reverse that and have the, the default experience be specialized for local media and optimized uh, heavily for that and making global media the exception. So typically you'd have, you would still have the media manager uh, to manage your global media, but when you uh, pick a media to include in a post or to include in a media picker or whatever is local to your content item, you would have an experience where uh, you can immediately upload a new, uh, a new image and it just it becomes a, a local image for that content item. And when we store the content item, we actually store the URLs of the media in the same document as the content item. And this way, we can actually have the metadata associated with that with the, the media also in the same document. That means that we are uh, not only we are improving the user experience because we're optimizing around the ninety percent scenario, but we are also optimizing the querying because now there is no select n plus one problem because when you uh, select a list of uh, content items, you actually get the media that go with them. So we are also taking advantage of the document storage. Uh, it's it's you know that that is exactly why we switch to document storage for that sort of thing. So I think it's it's optimal. So yeah, I'm I'm quite happy about this idea. So um, how will it look like? Uh, we will have the media link on the left, like today, but instead of showing 
content items and I we already did the change, it will show all the media files. Okay, it will show you a, a library of files that you have stored, all the global media files that you have. Okay, uh, just files like assets. Um, this will be the media. And you won't see any content item in the content item sections unless you create, decide to create a media content item, which is not the default. So from the media files, you could say, oh, create a content item from that. And then it will use the existing um, pipeline that we have to detect what type of content item and just, create the item and the properties. Just, just yep. a remark here on, on what you're calling them. We might actually not want to call them media content item, but attachments or something like that to make it clear that they're actually, you know, uh, unless I'm oh, talking, uh, unless I'm, you're talking uh, about the global, global ones. Oh, yes, yeah, yeah, I'm sorry. talking about the global content that, items. That makes sense. Like a generic content item, media content item. And then we can also do the same thing from a content item. So we could have something like a media, or what, how do you call that? Assets or? How do you call that? Attachments. Attachment. Attachment. Okay. So something called like attachment part or field or whatever. Attachment part. Um, that will let you pick media uh, files and uh, to create content items, to create embedded content items. Okay. Call them embedded because. because yeah, you don't have to browse for a folder or anything like that. You know. um, and these content items will be stored as part of the attachment part, which will be in a content item. And then from the picker, we have to be able to select. Uh, yeah, I assume we. Okay, well, we can pick the attachment part and. And that's okay. So it, it's like an attachment, attachment part picker. So you will just see the things from the content items. And the metadata will be seen from the content item itself. Okay. And, 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 and the attachment part can pick media files, create embedded content items, or reference global content items. Okay. The same way we uh, do for. Um, layers which own their widget content items but widget content items can also be global content items and we can have um, um, an element which will um, render a global widget if you want to use a widget in many places not just on layers so same idea So yeah, um, and Bertram added here also because it will solve the perf issue that we could still then have um, re well, render the metadata of content items in our templates without having to do a query to load the content items because these media content items are part of the current content item. So it should be super fast and still be consistent in terms of uh, data management. Um, that's the idea. So um, that's probably what I will do before to be able to ship uh, the media. Questions? Did I miss anything here? Nope. Um, that's it. Um, media and, 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 and here. Uh, this is wrong because it's done. And um, I could put June just sleep it month by month. I hope I can finish everything by that time. Um, it's just that at the same time, we might find some bugs and then polishing and shipping might take some time. Um, oh, I have almost no more battery, so it's really done. So yeah, I put June right now, but it's not a hard date. Again, depends on, on contributions. Um, the more we help, the faster it goes. Other questions? <laughs> I 
gets into more. It can help more. Okay, good. Time to go. Thanks everyone. See you on Thursday or on Gitter anytime, even on Skype.